I don't know if I like how this is going. So here we have the new, the new but old 86 350X in the shop. You can really get an idea of what we're dealing with here. What the heartbreak of dry rot does to us. Now last time we talked about this date. 21-5, last three digits, 215. 21st week of 1985 when that tire was made. I believe we linked that to May. Now this is the tire I had on the shelf that I was talking about. And this, this is 415, so the 41st week of 85. So somewhere between 21 and 41, they switched from Pro Vector to PV, the shortened version. Now this is a Pro Vector off my 85 rider that I had to take off because of some dry rot that I didn't trust for this big ride that we were on. And that is 454, the 45th week of... Uh, 1984, so sometime in November. So November, May, and I didn't do the math on, no, May, that's May of 85, and this is sometime later in 85. So we'll, we'll do some more homework on that, but I'm going to put that later PV tire on the front of this, so this will be in roller status again because really you have to dose up that front tire before you move it and it looks like that 12 hours later so we're gonna get into cleaning on this so that's about it for now stay tuned so a front tire swap isn't a complicated procedure just gotta get the front tire off the ground I always like to break my lugs free before the tires leave the ground because that helps. Uh, you got to loosen up the fork. You got to loosen up your your four 10 millimeter nuts that lock the axle in place. You got to loosen your, your headlight straps. And this fork, which sits right there, just basically slid right out. It was beautiful. I even... I even cried a little bit when it happened. But I'm about to pull those lugs off and uh, slide the new rim on, snug up those lugs, and then it's all in reverse. I might touch that fork a little bit with a soapy rag since I'm here. There's going to be a lot of since I'm here moments in this little exercise. But uh, it's going to be fun. But I just want to share that before I got too far along. I wasn't recording. But the next shot you'll see is that new rim on the new rim and tire on the front. And then we'll be on to the next. One thing is certainly leading to another on this. So I pulled the old tire and rim off. And I thought, well, the hub was a little dusty musty so i just wiped that down cleaned it up and then i cleaned up the rotor and i noticed the paint had been being worn off there which was because all this schmutz was wedged in by the caliper so i thought well i'll pull the caliper and clean the hose and clean these little clips and brackets and clean the fork lower and which turned into a really detail on the caliper and it had a lot of stuff wedged in there past the pads so i thought well let me let me get the pads out 
So I, I was cleaning the pads. And I think it was when I was cleaning the pads that I thought to myself, you know, what's wrong with me? Why am I, why am I like this? So I didn't come up with any answers, but I think I'm also going to pull the fender and wash that out and make sure these are nice enough looking bolts. And I'm just getting into it, I guess. I don't know. When I'm, like I said, I don't know what's wrong with me. But this fat cat's been sitting over here, becoming a trip hazard. Of course, I put it right there in front of my door and then took the forks off it so I couldn't move it or do anything with it. But I've been waiting on these fork seals. Dust seals, rather. The forks aren't linking, so I'm not going to mess with them. But in this box over here, I've got some... Some fork seals from the uh, the Waynesville Cycle Center is where I bought these from. I forget who turned me on to that place, but their prices are amazing. And uh, I got an OEM filter. One of these didn't have a filter on it. Had the cage, but no filter. So OEM Fat Cat filter. These are the little uh, fender grommets. I got just because I don't know. Um, here's my dust seals. These are the same as uh, a Grom, uh, a newer Grom 125. I found out, so they'll be around for a while. And this is the decompression cable I needed for my 350X that didn't come in in time, so I robbed one off a different machine. So, and this came in. This is mailed back to me from my buddy Nick. Over at West Michigan Motorsports. Let's set my, my phone up real quick here. Look at what these stickers say. Gotta be smarter than the tape. If you don't watch Nick's channel, you're missing out. He's very passionate and does a lot of good work. Just got himself a new... Uh, 250SX, oops, West Michigan Motorsports. Let's be delicate with this. This new warning label. This ATC might just put you in the hospital. I don't know if any of you guys have been put in the hospital by a ATC, but it's no fun. All right, this isn't following my face today. Maybe it is. But this is a uh, pre-work, Preston. We're going to get after it. Make the, the most valuable use of this hour and a half I can. Let's see what we do with it. We're doing the most dangerous operation that you can do on a... On a 350X here. Let me see if I can get this for you. It's not the ideal angle. So I got these acorn nuts glowing red. This one was creaking good when it was coming out. No, it's not. Oh, resistance.
sometimes you, you get the whole stud. But that's better than a sheared stud for sure. All right. That takes off a lot of stress. That's gonna make this exhaust look amazing. We'll get four new acorn nuts ordered. And then we can uh, get things together proper at a later date. It's going to take a little bit. I'm going to pull my air box. I'm going to expose the motor. I'm not going to pull the motor. I'm going to pull the carb. Me and my buddy, Curdy Eldridge at 223 Cycles, have discussed the carburetor. And he's going to do a restoration on it. And I'm just going to keep detailing. And then it's going to be pretty, pretty. Not going for a restoration by any stretch. I just want to clean it and make it look as nice as it can. Without, do <laughs> without doing a restoration. All right. That's all. Not perfect, but I can clean that up. Well, things are progressing nicely. Our hub is all detailed up. The brake rotor is put back on. I have to snug up those three bolts, but that looks a lot better than the, the worn outer edge. Over here, we've made tremendous progress. We did go get the header off. I've got a little bit of a mess on the floor, but keeping it real for everybody. This fought me a little yesterday. I got the, the acorn nuts off. I had one stud come out. That stud looks like a little bit came off. That's interesting. Probably, I ordered new acorn nuts, but I probably should get new studs too. I gotta get the copper washers out of there. Maybe I got a pick right here. If you've never installed an exhaust, or if you've installed, installed one improperly, oh, come on. You need to get these cr crush washers. Having a bit of a hard time. You see that cop? Oh, you're not even looking at it. See that copper color in here? That's a big kind of copper donut that goes in there. We'll put new ones in. I got those on order. This union here between header and muffler fought me. But... We got it out, just took some time and heat and play, and we'll get this motor detailed up. I'm going to pull the airbox, I'm going to pull the carb, the snorkel. That's going to give us access to almost everything. I'll flip it up. I'll have to put the grab bar back on. I had to pull the grab bar to get a little more room to get the exhaust off, but. I'll have to... Oh, what's up, Gimbal? All right. That's neat. I don't know what is oozing out here. But since that's been kind of tipped up, I've been losing some something something off the skid plate. But I'll put the grab bar on, tip it up, and then I'll pull the skid plates and get all around that. The axle I need to make a decision on. If I'm going to pull it or try to address it in place... 
the right thing to do is to pull it and stick it in a lathe and try to clean it up that way. We'll see. If I pull it, then I have access to everything to detail. And I mean, that's effectively what I've done on the front. So why wouldn't I do it on the back? But at this point, I'm going to put the hub back on. I've, I've been through the rotor, or I'm sorry, the caliper. That's all detailed and clean and looking like a million bucks. I cleaned the brake pads. Gimbal is just freestyling today. I'm looking forward to getting this back on three wheels, and that should happen here in the next 30 minutes. So... <laughs> Stay tuned. They are mounted back up. A lot of uh, cleaning as I went. A lot of uh, since I'm here sort of stuff going on. You'll see that fork boot looks a lot nicer than this one because I didn't do the outside on that one. Just detailing and conditioning. and Boy, that looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Which brings me to the motor. I've pulled the air box and snorkel tubes so you see like this haziness like I've just been kind of polishing it right here just a little bit and it's taken that away did a little bit of it up here just to see what I'm dealing with but I'm going to spend a bunch of time just kind of detailing this motor spraying it wiping it spraying it wiping it and uh, we're going to bring it all back I noticed like some paint coming off. I'll probably get the loose stuff off and then touch up in other areas to just to prevent rust or slow the rust down. It's really coming together nice. I think this is great. What I noticed was, uh, where's my tank? The tank decals. I was looking at pictures the other day of when I brought this home. 
Talk like an Eskimo. I believe this should be an orange. There should be orange in here. I think that's 85 style. I'm wondering if that was replaced. Was this tank painted? I don't think so. But does this tank up here have it? Yeah. See that 86 tank up on the wall right there if I can get to it? That's got 80, uh, 86 style warning with the orange. It's a one piece sticker. I think that's going to be the one that goes on this machine. But that will happen another day because now it is time to leave for work. As much as I'd love to just blow my entire day just tinkering. Can't do that. I don't know what this is on the floor still. Hmm. We'll figure that mystery out too. It smells gassy. It's probably gas from the overflow running onto the skid plate and then out the bottom. There, I think we solved it. Okay. Until tomorrow. So I had this over at the pressure washer last night. And obviously I didn't get every little thing about it. But I was focusing more on the motor and things. And... Uh, through some forensic trike detective work, I've come to the conclusion that what I thought was oxidation is actually a very poor quality paint job. Because look at that. That's black. Should it be black? No. It should look like this with, with no paint on it. Somebody hit this with some spray paint. And I was seeing evidence of overspray. Like this is probably grease off the chain. But there's a couple spots on the frame that I saw what I think is overspray. So why would they do that? I don't know. Like look at this. What's this? That's overspray. That is overspray on the plug wire. Why would they do that? Now I don't think my buddy Jim did this. I, I remember this being... Kind of like that when I let it go the first time. Like that's that's regular color. That's that's the overspray. So overspray. Peculiar. Very peculiar. Because as far as wear, like that's not bad. Why would somebody feel compelled to? To do what they did. Anyway, I've got it tipped up here. I think what I'm going to do is just continue to kind of detail it up. I'm removing a lot of that paint just with detailing it. And it's probably going to bother me so much to the point where in the future I'll probably do something about it. But probably not going to do anything about it at this moment. I don't think. But I got to get to work. Okay. At the uh, recommendation of Mr. Mike Pomgren at Vintage Motorsports, he said some oven cleaner. He has experience with that working to remove spray paint but not factory paint. So I've applied it in a couple of key spots and I'm gonna give it like a couple minutes here to act I'm doing good at removing it but it's gonna be a bear in there you can see I've pulled the top motor mount and I've moved this over just to gain access to areas I'd love to be able to just spray something on and then pressure wash it off I'm gonna get ready to do that here in a second and we'll see how it goes 
clean it up nice though. So, I'm going to end this here. I'm not going to show you what happened. We'll take it from where it lies. But, the oven cleaner didn't hurt things. But, it didn't do what I was hoping it would do. And, it's one of those things where you're torn. Do you, do you do what you set out to do and just let it be? Which is what I think I'm gonna do. Because if I now decide to go all the way, that wasn't what I was planning on. But stay tuned for the next edition of this 86 350X rehab. It's not a resto, rejuvenation rehabilitation clean up detail things like that but thanks for watching and uh join me next week for possibly and probably the conclusion have a good one